Good evening, good evening, everyone. And thank you all for tuning in tonight and joining us for the first part of our Strong Black Woman series. Thank you all so much for joining in tonight. So um, before we get started, before I let the ladies introduce themselves, because listen, we have some powerhouses here tonight. We have some powerhouses and I'm so excited to be on a platform with them, okay? This is an honor. This is absolutely an honor. So before we do that, do me a favor. Do us all a favor. Drop a chat in the, you know, um, comment, let us know that you're here, say hi, hello, how you doing, but also share this broadcast with other women that you know, other strong Black women in your community, in your circle, in your groups. Um, share this broadcast in those communities and let them know that they should be tuning in right now to join us for an amazing conversation. So I'm going to let the ladies go ahead on and introduce themselves. Let's start with Lejeune. Lejeune, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm with June Singleton. I am a health coach, a health and wellness coach, personal trainer, um, actress, and podcaster. Awesome, awesome. All right, and Miss Carly, Mrs. Carlika Best Night Menendez, please introduce yourself. Hey, 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 everyone. So yes, Carlika Bass Knight Menendez. Yes, all of that. The rap name is C-Money, okay? Y'all make sure to type <laughs> C-Money in the chat, okay? But I am the menopause navigator helping and supporting women transition, knowing that, you know what? Clarity, confidence, and consistency is going to get you through this journey because you're going to get there one way or another. Your girl mm -hmm. already having a hot flash, okay? Look, let me grab my water and my fan. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right, and Dr. Tavis Taylor, please introduce yourself. Hey, hey, I am Dr. Tavis Taylor. I am your neuro uh, mompreneur. I help mompreneurs who are career oriented, have nine to fives, and they want to tap into their inner genius even the more. I help you in several different areas, creating multiple streams of income so that you can leave a legacy for your children. Let me tell you something. Been on the lacrosse field with my brown boy, making $1,500 coaching on the phone, with one phone taking pictures of him and coaching. Hey, I want everybody to have that life, and that's simply because I know what it's like to really wish that that I could manage being a mom and an entrepreneur and have a nine to five. I'm Dr. Tavis. Thank you so much. I'm done speaking. And that's, and that's her. Her. <laughs> Listen, I'm just excited to be here with these ladies. Um, I'm Tamika Chapman, founder of Mogul TV Global Network, CEO of Mogul Media, and the and you know founder of Energizer. Energizer is that brand that is a leading wellness community for women of color. You know, um, I myself have gone through not having the healthiest of mental health statuses. And so it is my duty, it is my responsibility to do more. And with me doing more, it's bringing together resources, bringing together women to, again, energize and empower other women across the globe to just tune into their own lives and begin to love the life that they live. And so this series is definitely a part of that. As we speak about the strong Black woman, how many times have we heard that title? Uh, how many times have we probably said that? Says, Look, I'm a strong Black woman, okay? I can do whatever I want, right? <laughs> but sometimes that title comes with a heavy weight, right? It comes with a heavy weight, a heavy burden. And not only are we speaking it into ourselves and saying, okay, this is my title, but we have other people who now just see us as that title. So we're not allowed to feel. We're not allowed to have emotions. We're not allowed to have a moment of just not being in their perception as strong as they perceive us to be. And so that's what I really want us to be talking about this month of May, as we talk about mental wellness, as we talk about women's, you know, just women's health and wellness as well. I want to talk about that. So let's start there. Let's just start with that title, Strong Black Woman. Have any of you ever just said, hey, I'm a strong Black woman. I can handle this. I got this. I mean, I know we take that on, but have you ever found yourself saying, yes, I'm a strong black woman and I, I own it? <laughs> yeah, I even as a kid, I always wanted to be seen as strong. Um, weak was definitely, you know, something I didn't want to be seen as or thought of as of showing emotion because, you know, people kind of prey on the weak. So I wanted to be strong and be seen as strong. So I thought that was mm -hmm. important. But as I'm getting older, you know, we as women of color, we are looked at as strong women and we're not looked at as being vulnerable. We're not looked mm -hmm. at as having emotions 
and it kind of defeats what strong black woman really means for us personally when the outside world see us as well you don't have emotions you don't have feelings yeah 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 i love that i love that um what about you carlika so I think it's just the narrative, right? I think even in the healthcare world and people have a perception of what strong is. So I think we have to start with what is your definition of strong, right? I think is, you know, we, we think of strong and weak, right? If you're not strong, then you're weak. If you're weak, then you right? And so even when we think of the Bible, right? He said, when you're weak, I'll be strong, right? So a lot of times we, we have this persona and then people have a perception and perceive strong as being that you can't cry. I'm still strong when I cry. I'm actually stronger even when things try to break me and I acknowledge and assess the situation, right? And then I take some action. So I think we have to really define what does strong look like for you? And when we think of our mama and them and our grandma and all of these people, right? It's like, suck it up. Don't do this. Don't talk about that. Why do you, what? You don't go out there asking for nothing, right? We got this. And it's like, no, we really, it's moments where we don't have it. And so now what do you do? You build a strong community. So in those areas, like I can look at all of us and say, you know what? Yes, we're strong black women, but we all have a story that has built us, right? We all have a moment or have had moments that broke us, that built us right at the same time. And so you got to define what strong is for you, right? That's yeah. I love that. I love that by defining what what that strong means for you. I love that because now you you begin to take that power back with just that one that one action defining what that means in your life. Um, all right, Dr. Tavis, what about you? Have you ever, you ever found your claim? Claim it. Listen, I was, and then as a single mom of a brown boy, he turned two. I was, as a single mom of a brown boy, he turned thirteen. And I still was, and he turned 17. And so for me, it's gone in waves, but I realize that I can be weak even when I'm strong. And I had to rewrite the narrative. When my son turned two, my oldest son, I have a 24-year-old and a 14-year-old. When my 24-year-old turned two, I, I apologized to some people. When he turned 13, some people apologized to me because they understood what I told him when, told them when he turned two. And so I had to rewrite the narrative. I was so good at it, Tamika, that when it was Father's Day, you had to tell me Happy Father's Day. And God checked me. And it, all of everything changed when he turned two. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Um, okay, so before we move forward, Rocky, Miss Raquel, um, La Marie is here. So please, Raquel, please introduce yourself. And then the question that I asked the ladies um, were, have you ever found yourself proudly proclaiming that I'm a strong black woman. Mm, that's a really good one. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Raquel Marie. I am originally from Houston, Texas. I have um, expertise in public relations, strategic branding, and um, multimedia. And I will put my best foot forward to make sure that any vision that you have um, will come to life through our company and through um, God's lens. And that's a really good question. I'm just so happy to be here with you all tonight. Um, ooh, I don't know, because I definitely would say like, me trying to be in the field of media and working with cameras and majority of my team is male dominant. And so I would find myself like saying like, no, no, I got this. Like, you don't have to worry about picking up this. I can do it myself. You don't have to do everything for me. Like, I can make sure that this is happening myself. So um, I find myself doing that and turn down and all they want to just help out. And I just feel like, no, like, you think I'm weak. I don't want you to think like I'm just a weak woman and I can't carry them, carry my weight. So um, I would say in the midst of like while being on set. Got it. I can definitely understand that. Um, definitely understand that, um, especially in your industry, right? A lot of times in industry, we have to be as strong as we can possibly, especially in a male dominated field, um, which a lot of times it, it comes with the whole um, misconception of, okay, she's strong, she can handle it. We can chuck and jive with her, she'll be all right. You know, she wanted the boys, right? So um, I definitely understand that, um, but, Here's the next thing. Let's talk about some of those misconceptions, the misconceptions of being a strong mm -hmm. black woman. Um, 
for me, I, I want to talk about the misconceptions, but also how do we change the narrative? How do we change the conversation and the thought process of being that strong Black woman? So when it comes to us ourselves, right? Because I think all change start, has to start with us. It has to start with our own mindset and our own beliefs um, within our, ourselves. So how do we change the narrative within ourselves from saying, you know, Dr. Tavis, you mentioned earlier that you were, right? You know, then you apologize and now they're apologizing to you because of the strength that you had to have because you were raising two brown boys. How do we begin that shift from, um, you know, maybe thinking about it in a negative way or not wanting to want not wanting people to think that we're so strong all the time right right you know um to me that's such a loaded question because we have to have a come to jesus meeting with ourselves because that's a false narrative that we have been given ourselves that we're so strong what has happened is life has made us uh immune to feelings and to um actually how life really is i gave a talk in my clubhouse room and, and i was telling the women who were single listen you have hormones stop making it seem like it's a devil because that's you have hormones. It's normal. And so we have denormalized what is normal and what science and Christianity and all of it marrying together. If we put it together, it, it takes its course. I got my Ph.D. in positive neuropsychology because I wanted to understand Tavis. I wanted to understand me, why I do what I do, what makes me tick. And I realized that the brain is neuroplastic. Whatever you believe today, if you work hard enough, it's going to be made manifest. You can, uh, and I know uh, LeJun would appreciate this, you can exercise it enough that it will change. And so my narrative is, wait a second, yes, I'm strong, but I've had to be. And I had to have a meeting with Tavis and say, you're strong because you had to be. God never intended for you to be the mama, the daddy, the cat, the dog, and everybody else. And so when I became vulnerable, I promised myself and I promised my sisterhood and all brown and black women that look like me that I would be a voice of reason and saying, hey, come let us reason together. You're broken. You're saying you're strong. You're rolling your neck. Sis. You're broken. You need help. You need inner healing. You need deliverance. You are in denial. And as my father, who is deceased now, tells me, when I say, Dad, I want to quit this journey, he said, you can't. Who's bold enough to tell a woman who's making $250,000 a year, who seems like she has it all together, sis, you're broken. We have not been conditioned to hang around those who would tell us the honest truth that, listen, you need to take a back seat. You need to take a breather because you're broken. You're not as strong as you think you are. You are walking around on autopilot, delusional to who you really are. Now, if you want to get saved, set free, delivered, if you want to do all of that, then come, let us reason together. And so we have to look at ourselves and we have to be really, really have somebody who doesn't mind telling us that our dookie th sink Yes, you, yes, when you walk out of the house, you look good. But, baby, you're just a beautiful mess waiting to bleed on other people. And nobody has told you that you're bleeding. Y'all know, y'all can sit here. This is my baby. Nobody has told you that you're bleeding or that you're a beautiful mess. But when somebody does and you walk away and then somebody else comes, then you have a meeting with yourself and you say, wait a second, I am strong. But you know what? I don't want to be. I want to be vulnerable. I need to be that way. I hope that helps somebody. I'm done. <laughs> you know, there's a question that Gerard, all right? There's a question that Gerard posted. Thank you so much, um, Gerard, for tuning in. Appreciate your support, man. I'm not going to go and go share this, okay? Share this in all the communities you're in. <laughs> but his question was, um, he said that it's not that you can't be strong, but why do you have to? From his perspective, it all starts with men stepping up. Wow. Okay. Now that's a whole mouthful. Gerard about to get in trouble. Okay. Um, but I agree. I agree with, you know, for those of us who have men in our lives, right. I can tell you now, I don't want to be a strong black woman. Not all the time. I mean, I've been that way for a long time before I met my husband. That's how my dad, um, raised me to be. He raised me to be, you know, don't depend on nobody. You got this. You can do whatever it is that you need to get done. Do it for yourself. Don't just, just don't grow up depending on a man. I'm just like, all right, daddy. I just don't know how to change at all just yet. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to need somebody for that. Um, but I agree with that, Gerard. Uh, Jerica, can I say this though? I love what Gerard said, but men can't, men are just as broken. 
OK, and so a man can't step up to a place that you don't even know of. Right. You can't step up to a place that you're broken in to even alleviate certain things because we have been unfortunately conditioned not to talk. We've been conditioned not to deal with issues and deal with them head on. We ain't talking about them pacifying like pat pat. Oh, don't do that. No, but certain things. So men have not been taught to be vulnerable either. So when we I love what Dr. Tavis said, we got to look at us we have to ask why why am i so defensive why do i feel like why why do i always say i got it i got it i got it i got it right so now we singing that broken record i got it so then when help does come along the way we we throw help away we push help away because we are not open to receiving and so now even in marriages when someone is saying i'm here to help you a lot of us don't even allow them to help because why i got it so then when you're frustrated and we're overwhelmed and we looking like Bruh, don't you see me doing A, B, C, and D? And then we about to roll the neck and stuff because it's like, do you understand? Like, do you understand the words that's coming out of my mouth? And he looking like, but you always say you got it. So now we lack communication, yeah. right? So without communication and conversations and people being vulnerable to express themselves to say, hey, I'm not OK, I need help. And especially in our community, when we say I need. That's like a red flag. I don't need no help. What you, I don't, what is it that you need from me? I don't need nothing from you, right? So we all have to step up and we have to really dig deep within ourselves to get down to why. Why am I like this? Why, why do I feel rejected? Why do I think this way? Why do I feel like I always have to be strong? Why do I always have to feel like in the workplace I got to prove myself? Why do I have to try to prove myself to family members? Why, why, why? So I think when we really get down to the why and women mm -hmm. understand too that men have brokenness as well like we're not the only people out here bleeding we're not the only people out here broken right they are broken as well but when we can all acknowledge that now we can all be strong together and we can raise brown and black boys and girls to be strong but not because they have to be but just because it's part of your dna but it's coming from a vulnerable place to say you know what this is what i'm dealing with but this is going to make me right yeah. so yeah i love that i love that and that's something that Gerard stated said as well. He says, absolutely. When he says starts with us, he means that they as men need to be whole first, um, which is something, you know, a little bit of transparency. Um, my husband just told me that the other day. He says, that's your problem. You don't want to follow. I'm just like, bruh, give me something to follow. Okay. <laughs> We okay, praying for you. Saying. We praying for you, Doctor Tavis. Everyone, stretch your hand for us. <laughs> Listen, okay. Most folks know I have a slick mouth, okay. Um, and it was in the heat of the moment because I wasn't too happy about some things. And you know, as women, that neck gets a roll, and I'm just like, bruh, this is not really the conversation you really want to have today with me. All right. Um, however, I agree with that though. I I agree. Um, that men should be whole first so that they can lead, lead us so that we don't have to always be strong. Like, you know, we can tap into our inner feelings and inner emotions and actually rely on you to come through and show up with, like you say you are, right? Um, so Lejeune, like tell us a little bit about, you know, your experiences in being that strong Black woman and, you know, the misconceptions that you may have experienced that others have perceived about it with you. So for me, when my dad died, um, I had to become that strong black woman girl. I had to protect myself and depend on me. Um, I was molested at a young age. I told my mom, my mom didn't do anything. So it was me protecting me. And I always felt like I had to protect me. And when it came to people offering me things like men, I'm like, nope, because you're going to want something in return. So I didn't trust that. And it took for a pastor that told me, you know, you're taking away people's blessings when they're trying to give to you. It doesn't mm -hmm. always mean that somebody's trying to get in your pants or somebody is expecting something from you. And I never looked at it like that because I was always in defense mode. I had to protect mm -hmm. me. I had to protect me. My last relationship three years ago really 
helped me to understand because my ex would say, you're not vulnerable. You're not showing emotion. And I couldn't understand because, you know, I would never cry in front of anybody. If I would cry, it would be to myself and it'd be a quick second. And after that relationship, I realized, you know what? You've detached yourself from being vulnerable and from having emotions. So now I'm learning how to be vulnerable and how to show emotions. And it's still a work in progress because it's not something easy because this is something that I've been doing since I was seven years old up until now in my 40s. So it's not an easy thing. But again, I had to learn how I have a nephew <laughs> and I love my nephew. And, you know, you have to take in perspective of, you you would want somebody to treat your nephew how you know you would want to treat a man and then i think about my father my my dad was a strong black man he took care of the household my mom was a stay-at-home mom and it's like okay well when you meet that man will you be able to be vulnerable for your partner right right i love that i love that um, the vulnerability piece of it, I think is really the importance because with vulnerability, it means that we have to trust, right? We can't just be vulnerable with anybody, any old body, as they say, right? You have to trust that person so that, you know, when you are vulnerable and you're sharing the things that you've gone through, sharing those deep, dark traumas that you've gone through, that they're not going to use them against you, laugh at you, um, walk away from you because now you're being open about your experiences and they may not be strong enough to handle it. But again, it's all about being with somebody or, you know, using, have being vulnerable with those that you trust. Um, so before we move on, Gerard made a comment. He was he said that a mature man can use diplomacy, right? As it says in First Peter, take in knowledge of her. A godly man can lead the restoration of healthy relationships in our communities. Um, I love that because that means that men are standing up, okay? Um, the men are standing up. And then we have uh, Mr. Ron Pitts stating that the men have to heal first, which I, I totally believe. I totally agree with that. Um, Hey, Miss Ellen Walker, she's joining us too. She's joining us here. Um, hey, ladies, keep up the good work. Be accountable and stand firm. Love you first. You are strong, black, and beautiful women. Absolutely. Y'all better give it up two times for my mama. Um, <laughs> but so as we continue to talk about this title of strong black woman, tonight we're really focusing on us as it relates to the social relationships that we have, right? Um, our own self-care, self-worth, self-love. How do we say no? Um, like, I want to jump to that one, like, right, right now. We're going to start with Miss Rocky on this one. How do we say no? I, I think sometimes for myself, it gets hard. Well, it used to be hard, I'll say that, because I've gotten real good at it now. But it used to be so hard <laughs> to say no. It was, it was, I felt like I was rejecting or I was letting somebody down every time that I would say, no, I can't do it. And so I would rarely say no. And that led to me just being outstretched, arms, you know, pulled a million and one ways. But Rocky, let's start with you. When it comes to you managing your time and your sanity and your mental wellness, how do you say no? Or has that been a factor in you stating no in your role and capacity? You know, you hit it right on the spot because I find myself always being a people pleaser and I'm always saying yes, 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 yes. And not realizing that I'm depleted. I don't even have the bandwidth. I don't even have the capacity to even show up. But I'm so busy saying yes, because I don't want to let anyone down. So mm -hmm. I am still going through that phase of learning how to really say no like i have to learn how to like look at my phone if i'm in the middle of doing something and if i can't attend to something in that moment normally i would okay let me stop what i'm doing and answer the phone and say hey how can i help you or what is it that you need in that moment and so now i'm trying to think about how that can either be leveled in that moment to where like okay let me understand like, okay, is this going to help this moment that I'm in now? Is this feeding into what I'm working on, whether that be business or whether that may be honestly me spiritually journaling, you know, or me just getting myself together. If I'm am taking, you know, since as we all know, we work 
all day long. And when we need to take that moment to just busa and say, you know what, God, let me give this over to you right now. Let me just sit in your presence. That's when everybody and their mama want to call you and they want to get you to get off your rocker and stuff like that. So I've had to like manage to like either put my phone on do not disturb or even just turn my phone face down because I'm still walking through how to say no and how to keep my nose at my nose. Because sometimes I might find myself in saying like, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe not this time, but then I find myself feeling convicted, feeling like I need to show up for everyone. And then I may re renege and be like, you know what? But we can do this with some sort of compromise. And I have to realize that I can't do that because if you keep doing that, you keep putting yourself in the same habit of doing that, people are going to always expect you to show up in that magnitude. So really learning how to say no and just having that moment that little gesture like you know say no and just shake it off you know what i'm saying and just keep it pushing so that's what i've been uh <laughs> kind of just trying to walk through i love that i love that you know javad i you listen javad is the man of the hour okay he's saying how do you say no know your limits know your value know your purpose and set those boundaries okay based Three. on your own understandings like he just wrapped that thing all the way up and no is a complete and statement come on <laughs> Because I remember listening to Sarah Jakes one time and she said, you can't be a people pleaser and a kingdom establisher at the same time. Ooh. And when I heard that, baby, it slapped me right across the head. And I said, you know what? Let me make sure I keep that in mind. So that's what's up. I love that. I love that. All right, Dr. Tavis, for you as the mom of brown boys, all right, um, when it comes to parenting you know you've had them in, in different age ranges you know um how did that come about with you having to show up and be you know the strong black woman for your boys um but also raising them to understand no means no right what does that look like for you you know thank you so much <clears throat> for this question so i have two boys 24 and 14. because i'm a daddy's girl and, you know, love my mom. They're, they were an amazing couple before he passed away. I learned from my dad, let your yes be yes and your no be no. He had the slogan, we have t-shirts and coffee mugs, um, say what you mean and mean what you say. And in that, what I had to do was, I'm here now, but I had to overcome that mama guilt. I had to overcome being a single mom. I had to overcome dad not being there. I had to, and one day I just said, can I be, be transparent? I stood flat-footed, and I'm going to tell you something, Raquel. I decided I was not going to serve Jesus and be in bondage. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a come-to-Jesus meeting with everybody, and whatever I've done to you, whatever that looks like, let me apologize because I ain't going to serve God and be in bondage. I just refuse to. When I made up in my mind that I was going to believe the word of God for Tavis because I was believing it for everybody else, I was praying people through $5 million loans, $10 million loans, and I was watching this, this incident happen one time where this uh, two ladies had come to me for some help, y'all, and they really needed me because I'm a, I'm a resource person. And two weeks later... They were together at Myrtle Beach, and I had helped them find resources to pay their rent, to do whatever. I said, wait a second, they didn't need you. They knew you could help. And so it is with my boys. They don't need me, right? They don't need a depleted mom. They don't need a mom that can't show them how to set boundaries. One of the things that blessed me, and I land my plane here, was my son came in the house. It's been years ago. He's 24 now, and he might have been about 18 years old. And he came in, and he went into the bathroom. It was Thanksgiving. We were at my parents' house. And my sister, who's very prim and proper, like she's very, she doesn't have any children, but she's very prim and proper. Tyler came in, and he was brushing his teeth with his hand. With toothpaste. And I was like, what are you doing? Ma, I touched a girl, and she said no, and so I got up and I left. All she heard was her nephew had touched a girl. What I heard was, I taught him that no means no. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that he got it, I knew that if I instilled it in my other son, and if I kept instilling it, they would understand that no means no. Thank you. I hope that blesses someone. Amen. Amen. I love that. I love that. I mean, because, again, I think that goes with the whole black, um, not just a black men, but men understanding um, where their place is for women. That goes with the whole conversation we've already been having with Gerard and Mr. Ron, all right? Um, with Black men healing, I think that if we start them out the right way, which I'm so into in tune with my son, 
and wanting to make sure that he has a great solid mental foundation of understanding no means no and understanding it's okay to have fun, but you have to understand how to communicate as well, how to communicate your feelings um, and speak up when you need to speak up too. It's all a part of that healing process. I don't want them to have to go through what I, you know, sometimes felt that I couldn't speak up or I didn't have a voice or not feeling seen or heard. So I want to make sure that mine understand that it's okay to speak. It's okay to speak up for yourself, um, regardless, man or you know, man or woman. Now we talk about the strong black woman, but you know, Tavis had to hit on them boys. That's my that's that's my <laughs> that's my sweet spot for my baby boy. Um, so. We're going to continue the conversation, but we're going to take a quick break real quick, y'all. So I want y'all to stay stay here with us. Don't leave. We're going to play a, um, a couple of um, videos here as we keep going, but we'll be right back. And we're going to start tapping into some personal development, even more talking about being the strong Black woman and being more transparent with our conversation. So thank you all for tuning in. While we're doing this two-minute break, make sure you share this broadcast with your community. Share this with people that you know. Tag some other Black women, some strong Black women in your life. Like, you know a, a strong Black woman. I know everybody know a strong Black woman. Even if it's your mama, your aunt, your sister, your cousin, your niece. Don't matter. Tag them. Tell them, hey, come tune in. You need to be a part of this conversation. We want to talk to them. We want to hear from them. We want to have those. We want to have the conversation. This is interactive. This is energizing. This is just our way of saying, hey, let's have this conversation. So, again, we'll be right back in about two minutes, y'all. If you want to make a positive shift in your health, fitness, nutrition, and wellness, start with the tools to redefine your mind. At Lejeune Singleton, we help you create the mental space needed for change. Next, we provide in-person and virtual personal training, health, mindset, nutrition, and wellness coaching services. Importantly, we offer accountability and support. Book your consultation today online at lejunesingleton.com. Menopause is not a disease, but a transition where we can all work together. That's why we're excited to have MAP, the Menopause Advocate Program. We're implementing the 4A method in the workplace, promotes health and, and well-being strategies, which increases performance, productivity, and profitability. For more information, visit bit.ly forward slash, all capital letters, M-A-P dash P-R-O. Or you can reach out directly to Carlita Bass Knight Menendez at 912-322-8380. are back. Thank you all. Um, I hope you've taken the time to go out and share this broadcast with others. Um, I'm Tamika Chapman, joined by Dr. Tavis Taylor, Carlika Basnight Menendez, Raquel Marie Sims, as well as Lujun Singleton. These powerhouse women are here. We're talking about strong Black woman, being one, having the title, wearing the title, what it means, what it don't mean, and how we can just join others and have others join us as we continue the conversation. So before we left, we talked about um, a lot of stuff when it comes to being a, a strong Black woman, the misconceptions, the perceptions, um, and just our own experiences of wearing the title um, and others giving us the title and us taking on that title and what it all means. But right now, I want to go to a couple of comments before we move to our next um, part about being a strong Black woman. So, of course, Gerard is here. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you. Um, he, this is a powerful conversation. You know, he's enjoying it. And, of course, he's inviting others to join us as well. And this other comment was another problem is that the contentious spirit brewing amongst men and women. We, we need to learn to get past all of that. Um, so I, I love that. 
getting past all of that good stuff <laughs> um, because it's not it's never going to fare well for anybody anybody involved so again thank you all so much for tuning in with us tonight um, make sure you go and share this with others invite others to come and join the conversation with us we're going to now hop into more conversation about being a strong black woman um, again, thank you all for saying yes to joining me tonight. Um, and I hope y'all okay with being a little bit more transparent, okay? So now we're going to talk about in our own personal lives, we're, you know, business owners. Um, we may have a nine to five uh, or we may have had a nine to five and resigned, whatever that looks like. Can we talk about in our own businesses, being strong Black women and the fact that it may have come to a point where, okay, not come to a point, you got in charge in your business, right? Um, and I know that sometimes we're not as strong when it comes to saying, this is my fee, this is what I charge. You know, this is a business that my family is re relying on, so I have to charge in my business to make money. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about as Black women in business, how do we stay with the whole mindset of charging and being okay with it? Have you all had any challenges with that in the past? Um, let's start with Miss Rocky down here. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for that question. It's very loaded. Um, I would say that it was challenging for me because when we talk about ourself and like when it comes to self-worth there are times where I, I was not confident in my work and I was afraid to like charge a particular amount because I'm just like I don't know if they'll like it or I don't know how they may receive it and so I found myself doing a lot of pre boner stuff and then I started to realize like no what am I doing like I gotta eat you know I quit my job last year I have to make it work I have to make sure like I am really out here hustling and really doing what I can to put my best foot forward to really Use, utilize the gifts that God has given me. And so I think it had to take for me to just hear advice from individuals who have already been thriving in the industry or just even individuals who have their own business and them letting me know like, hey, you have to give yourself credit. You have to, not from a conceited perspective or anything like that, but more so from a, from a, that confident perspective, like, I can walk proudly in my gifts and be that strong black woman and be like, you know what? Someone is going to benefit for this. Someone needs this and someone is going to be willing to pour into you as much as we've been pouring into others. And so I think for me, it's really trying to stand firm on that, mm -hmm. on that ground. And like one of the models that we have at La Marie Media is be bold, don't fold and come through the fire as gold. Like I had to like, keep my, keep that in mind every single day, like be bold when, you know, working on whatever it is that I'm working on and honestly don't fold don't fold under the pressures of individuals that 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 a percentage that does not want to pour in or say mm -mm, that's too high I don't know if we can do that don't fold under that and understand like you know what I know my worth I know what my 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 product is worth and I know that it's going to be beneficial in some form of way and come through the fire as gold come through the fire from all the tests all the trials and making somebody feel like okay you aren't able to show up, but just having that confidence and charging. What that. did they say? Yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, now make me imitate that woman's voice, okay? <laughs> I love that. You know, I I want to, you know, us to talk about how do we find a balance with our professional lives and our personal lives as strong black women. Like you know, we, we have to be strong in our workplace or in our business. How do we come home? And is, is there a shift when we come home or what does that look like um, for you all? So let's start with Lejeune on that one. Um, Lejeune? Yes, it has to be a shift because you have to leave work and clients where they are and have your own personal time for yourself. Or if you have a partner, husband, whatever, that time for them. But um, for years, that was hard for me because I was taking on, I was working at the health department. I was taking on all of that stuff and I was taking it home with me and I hated the job. And that was the topic of conversation when I got home to my ex was work, work, work. And, you know, you kind of look at that now of, you have to be able to release and let that go, leave work at work 
and have personal time for personal time because there was no personal time. I lived in Virginia. I worked in Maryland. Soon as I got home, I think I was up for a couple of hours and I was asleep because of that commute. And living in a DC, Maryland, Virginia area, you in traffic and you tired. So yeah. now I take time for myself. Um, I don't work on weekends. I take that time for me. If I want to hang out with friends, I hang out with friends. If I don't, I don't. I don't answer the phone. I may just text and that's it. And if I don't want to text, I won't text. So, <laughs> you know, it depends on me. And now my friends and family know that, that, okay, the weekend she is having some mental health time for herself to regroup and get ready during the week. And I think that's important to understand that is, you know, having that time for yourself. And I know I don't have kids, but I, I work with women who have kids and they don't know how to balance the time of time for themselves because they have so many sports and events and things with their kids. Or they mm -hmm. have stuff that they have to do with their husband or they're working because there's people still working from home and they're working from the time they wake up until the time they go to sleep and they don't know how to balance that time. And that is always a conversation I have with them. Take five minutes. If it's just five minutes, take five minutes for yourself just to have a breather or go outside or just sit with yourself. I think that's important. I think for mothers, it's definitely more challenging, especially, you know, Dr. Tavis being a single mom of being mommy and daddy. So definitely understand that. But, you know, taking a few minutes, because I think for us, we're so programmed of how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to be 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. If it's two minutes, one minute, five minutes, Take that little time for you to regroup, get your thoughts and your mind together, take some deep breaths, do some meditation, do some yoga, do whatever works in that five minutes. Do that for you. And I think that's important. I do that for myself because today was one of those days I was like, I need some sun. I need to be outside. And I took a 30 minute walk because I needed that for me. And I think that's important. I love that. I love that. Listen. I got to steal away from these toddlers every single day. I run away, okay? In the house. I run away in the house. I hide in a closet. I find another closet, <laughs> another room. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to do that. But I am. I have to get at least 30 minutes of just peace and quiet to myself every single day because I need it. Um, I know in my house, the toddlers, they, they go on 24-7. They wake up on a thousand, right? Um, and I love that about them. I never want them to, you know, dull down their little lives. They love to wake up. They love to get started. And I'm just like, I love it too, but I just need some quiet um, like for like 30 minutes, like five minutes. <laughs> yes, Essence said, listen, she has, um, she's become a master of hide and seek. Yes, yes, and yes. Like you, my playmate, okay? Thank you, Tyler Mama. You understand, you understand. You are my best friend now, Essence. <laughs> but, you know, as, as women in business, having careers, you know, significant other, Miss Carlika Best, Mike Menendez, um, for you, have when, you know, working outside of the home and then coming home to a husband and children who are waiting on mama to come, come through the door. They waiting on that interaction with mama, right? How did that look? to you to transition or what kind of transition was it for you going from work and having to do what it is that you do to not coming home and you still got to do what it is you do that you do but you know relationship wise um and then having that time for you too so one is i'm listening to everyone so y'all see me over here like i'm on the phone and i'm taking notes right but two words that came to my mind, balance and boundaries, right? Mm. So we even have to have balance in the home, balance in the workplace, because some of us will work ourselves to death, right? I often talk about love yourself to health and not to death, meaning even in the good things, right? It's not a bad thing to work. It's not a bad thing to play hide and seek, toddler mamas. But what about y'all toddler moms and a lot of us, right? We're transitioning to eventually like empty nesters. I'm closer to being an empty nester that I don't have no toddlers. Okay, so they they're not waiting on me like that to me because you know, <laughs> right? 
I got to go into their space, right? I got to invite myself into their world now. Like they're not running up to me trying to hit sit on my lap. Well, like the 12 year old occasionally, right? But I got a 21 year old, 18 and 12, right? So they're, you got to come into their space. So it's that balance and boundaries of knowing what it is that I need, right? And then what it is that, what is it that they need? But we're all in like training mode, right? Because as they become empty nesters, then they're not going to need me in that aspect anymore, right? They'll all be out the house, all of these things. So then you're left with your spouse and yourself if you're married or you're in a relationship. So now we have to look at relationships in its entirety. So for me, it's really organization, right? I... I have to have like if stuff I tell people it's not in the calendar, it don't exist. Right. I don't know if it's brain fog. I don't know what it is, but if it's not in the calendar, it's probably not going to get done. So I love what Lejeune said too, taking that time. So a lot of times because we have been programmed to do this and go there, you got to do it. Boom, 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 boom. All till we're exhausted. And the Bible doesn't tell us to work until we're exhausted. It says be fruitful and multiply. So even being fruitful is saying, let me take a walk. Let me take care of my health. So I think if we start actually implementing these things and putting it in our schedule, right? The same way um, when our kids have football, basketball, track, whatever that looks like, there's a schedule, right? There is a schedule. So I think if we put these things in our calendar and we learn how to stick to them, yes, we can pivot because we know life life is life in, right? Emergencies happen, but more times than not, we actually find ourselves making excuses of why we can't work out, of why we didn't drink the four bottles of water that we were supposed to be intentionally drinking, right? Because now when we even look at now, we're in month five, right? A lot of people had fitness goals in January, right? I'm going to the gym X amount of days, blah, blah. I'm going to drink all 64 ounces, 128 ounces of water. I'm about to get this waist snatch. Now everyone trying to work on a summer body. Let me lean in. You too late for the summer body, boo. Like summer almost here, right? But then on top of that, we don't want to create summer bodies. We want to create lifetime things. We want to create legacies, legacies of health, right? Legacies of wealth. So balance boundaries and for me organization so yes I work I work my business all the things but I've always just been this organized person so I didn't I had a schedule okay I know that I have this going on if I know what my day already looks like and then on the business side of it you teach people how to treat your business you have to respect your business first. So if you say you don't work between you only work between these hours then quit answering emails at this time of day when you close. Because guess what? When Walmart closed at, I'm in Albuquerque, so they Walmart closed at nine o'clock, y'all. Okay. But Walmart closed at nine or 11 o'clock. I don't care what need you have, but you're going to break in. They close. So you have to, and they don't want to come to bail you out in the name of Jesus, okay? Because you saw they was closed. So we have to create those boundaries. So we teach people how to respect our business, but we have to learn how to respect our business to say, look, this is my price. This is what it is, right? Do you go to Walmart and you negotiate at the cash register? Well, I really don't want to pay um, $19.99 for this particular item. Well, ma'am, you, do you want it or you want to put it back? Matter of fact, they'll put it back for you, okay? So you don't even got to put it back. So what if people have an option? You give them options in your business, but we don't have to keep wavering. Oh, well, let me go lower and let me be cheaper and let me do this. Because guess what? It's the same effort for $25 for $25,000, okay? It's the same effort. And when you, when we really embrace what we have to offer, then those prices and stuff, you don't even sweat or nothing. You're like, yep, this is the price. Mm -hmm. I'm at the table. I'm in the room. I have arrived. And this is what it is, right? I show up at business meetings with my scrubs on. You think anyone ever said, oh my God, what is she coming in her scrubs for? Well, I just got off of work and I'm showing up, okay? And they want to touch the scrubs because they're like, oh, these are soft, right? But I'm going into medical facilities. So why not? With my Nike 270s on and my scrubs on, Okay. Not a question. So you have to show up, but I say balance and boundaries. I love that. I love that. Listen, ladies, I'm enjoying this conversation. And I know others that are tuning in are joining it as well. And I'm so excited that you all are here. Thank you all for joining in tonight with this conversation. If you have any comments, make sure you comment here to um, let us know your thoughts about the topics that we're discussing. And the main topic is being a strong Black woman. Um, so either that's you 
or you know somebody who is, right? Um, and if it's not you, invite the woman who is because she needs to be here and be a part of this conversation um, as well. And, you know, we're not saying that being a strong Black woman is a bad thing. Um, as Dr. Tavis told us earlier, you know, she had phases of being a strong Black woman and what that looked like for her. Um, sometimes we just have to be in that role depending on our life circumstances. And it's okay. Nobody's saying anybody's fault well, because I'm going to tell you right now, I've always been a strong Black woman according to my daddy, okay? <laughs> Um, that's how he, he, that's how he, me and my sister, we're both the same. Like we can just go and get it done. It doesn't matter. Okay. We'll just get it done because we don't have a lot of time to just sit and say, okay, well, can you do this? And can you do this? And can you do this? Even in, in my career, I found myself being that strong woman and strong black woman in my career, just getting things done. As a matter of fact, talking about careers, talking about our, uh, our lives at, in nine to fives, um, as well as working with others, um, more myths and more attitudes and personalities that nobody want to deal with. Um, we're going to be talking about that next week. So I mean, I want to make sure you, that you all come back with us. We're going to be here every Wednesday, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, all throughout the month of May. We're going to be here with another part for the Strong Black Woman series, all right? But before we get out of here tonight, I want to go around the room and I want to ask each of you ladies, if you could give yourself 20 years ago some advice yeah, think about how old you were 20 years ago. Now, Rocky, um, Rocky, Rocky, listen, um, she, she, you know what? Just read yourself a lullaby, okay? Um, but <laughs> Rocky is the baby of the group, y'all. She's the baby of the group. <laughs> She's the young sister up here with us, all right? However, <laughs> however, if you could think back to, you know, 15, 20 years ago, as a young lady, right? What advice would you give yourself or another young lady that's at 20 years your senior, right? Um, what advice would you give to her about her and the label of strong black woman um, and embracing it or either how can she um, not embrace it as much if that's not what she wants? Like what advice would you give, which, whichever way it is that you'd like to do? Um, so let's start with you, um, Dr. Tavis. Absolutely. <clears throat> own your genius, walk in purpose. When you own your genius and you walk in purpose, nobody can come and tell you something different. Mm. Own your genius, walk in purpose. When you do that, nobody can come and tell you something different. Because I spent so much time jumping on bandwagons because I didn't own my genius. I didn't know my purpose and I didn't own my genius. But boy, do I know it now. That's exactly the advice that I would give that if, if you start now, and you're very firm in who you are, let your yes be yes and your no be no. A lot of the hurt and betrayal and all of that stuff, you will bypass all of it. Thank you so much. I'm done. Mm, 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 Jesus. Yes, Lord. Um, <laughs> yes. All right. Um, let's go with you, LeJune. LeJune Singleton, let's go with you. I would say you are your only competition. Because mm. we get so many women who work in nine to fives that saying they're trying to be better than somebody that's in the workplace or somebody, one of their siblings or something. You are your only competition. So once you realize that and let go of what Susie and Pam and Keisha and all them doing and focus on you, you will be so successful and you will soar. The sky's the limit. Right. Okay. Okay. I love it. I love it. And I love it. All right. Let's go. In. Rocky, what advice would you give um, a young lady on being a strong black woman? I would honestly say obedience, being obedient. Um, I found myself like just thinking back when I was younger, it made me think about it. I was 10 y'all. So let me get it together. But I found myself when somebody told me not to do something, that rebellious spirit in me was like, mm, I'm going to do it. And then I realized that those wrong decisions that I made led to a domino effect of things that I could have prevented. So I would just definitely say being obedient and really just um, walking in your calling and letting no one tell you that you can't dream or that you cannot vision. Like 
like one of the women said, or one of the women said earlier, I believe it was Dr. Tavis about what you create in your mind and how you, it's already manifesting. It's already doing that. So you can't, no one can tell you that you're not able to become who God has called you to become. So being obedient and walking your purpose. I love it. Obedience. All right. All right. And we're going to wrap this thing up with, with Miss Carlica. Best night Menendez. What advice would you give a young lady on being a strong black woman? I would definitely say when I, I when you asked it, I was like, ooh, I was 23. Right, y'all. Go ahead and drop in the comments. I know I still look 23. Okay. <laughs> I own it. Okay. I own it. Why? Because I'm drinking my water, getting my rest, stressing less. Okay. Doing the things I need to do. But anyways, I would definitely say don't let your past dictate and define your future. And I say that because at that age, I had my first child out of wedlock as a PK kid. Right. Mm -hmm. Year in as a mom. So all of the things that people were saying left and right, I could have allowed that to define that we went on later on and had like two more out of it, like Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, right? But <laughs> we eventually got married, y'all. But I think back at 23, a year in, and if I would have allowed those things to really weigh down on me and define, I wouldn't be sitting here today doing what I do. So don't let your past define your future. Mm, I love that. I love that. Don't let your past define your future. All right. So here's the thing. Before we get out of here, Gerard made a note, um, a question. What can men do to be that to be value added participants in this movement? Now I have my own response to that. You know, um, my response is to Tell them to show up, show up here with us every Wednesday night. First of all, show up because it's a part of the conversation, but don't just show up, invite their significant others to join in the conversation, because I'm sure there's something that each of us will say that they're going to agree with in some kind of way that now it allows them to start a conversation of, he can ask her, well, what do you need of me? What can I do to help? What is it that you need from me? You know, that that's my response. So what would what, what would you all say? Um, Dr. Tavis, what would you say um, men can do to be added value to a, what we're doing this month? Oh, commit to therapy, commit to getting healed, to commit to being delivered, commit to their commitments, go back and get that child that somebody said may be theirs. Do I need to go on? Oh, see, I'm getting all wild. Uh, with this thing. No, commit to not just this movement because we're here, but the movement in your community to your moms, to your sisters, and all of those, to your exes, and apologize, and all of those good things. Commit to being a part of the healing process of the entire movement of the strong black woman. You're the reason why we have to be strong black women in the first part, but if you start with one, you start a movement that says we're going to assist the strong black women and the children and the brown boys who have been left behind. We're going to go back and get those children, but first we're going to get our own. Now that's what I would say. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I mean, he said just one answer. He said just one answer, okay? Dr. Tavison went in all the way, okay? <laughs> I mean, hey, you got to get the people what they want. Give them what they want because, hey. Right. Oh, Gerard, right. Gerard, exactly. you got your answer, okay? You got the sermon. You didn't got the mic, okay? So we just expect to see y'all men here in the building, okay? Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Invite them in with us. Invite them to be a part of this conversation because it's not just for women. This is us talking about our experiences in being strong Black women, what that looked like for us and what it still looks like for us it, um, as we still hold that title. Again, there's nothing wrong with being called a strong Black woman because I truly believe that I am a strong Black woman and in a lot of instances we have to be that um, in our lives. And again, there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, Mr. Ron, say we're here, okay? Yes, Mr. Ron, go invite the rest of your brothers to come on in here and join the conversation too and tell them to invite their significant others um, to be here with us as well. So absolutely. Um, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you. The advice that I would tell a young lady um, 20 years younger than me, I would tell her to show up for this conversation every Wednesday in May, because this is going to tell her a lot about what she needs to know um, with the title of being strong, but of being a strong black woman, show up, show up here. All of my millennials, 
um, millennial ladies, millennial gents, show up. I'm going to tag every last one of them after this and tell them, listen, go back and listen to that and then get ready to show up next Saturday, next Wednesday because this conversation is for you. It's not just for us. We're trans being transparent about it, but it's really to help others grow. It's to help others um, be okay with wherever that whatever that position is in life for them. So again, thank you all for tuning in. Thank each of you, Dr. Tavis Taylor, Mrs. Carlica Bass Knight Mendendez, Ms. Raquel Marie Sims, and Ms. Lejeune Singleton. These powerhouse women, I thank you all so much for joining me and having this powerful conversation. And I look forward to doing this every Wednesday. Y'all get ready to get ready for more because it's going to be a lot of conversation we're having every Wednesday at 7 p.m. So make sure y'all tune in. If you can't watch us live here, you can always catch the replay at Mola TV Global Network. You'll find our show right there. So again, thank you all for tuning in tonight. You all have a great evening. Um, we'll see you all next Wednesday.